Welcome to part 4 of the Woodson IDE video tutorial. This part is about syntax highlighting and the content assist function. Syntax highlighting is a very common function also in other text editors. Uh, the specific thing for Woodson IDE is that it is bound to a specific compiler and it is very precise in recognizing the different types of syntax elements. So there are commands opcodes as the most important ones, then we have directives which control the compiler in itself, illegal opcodes supported by some compilers, pseudo opcodes which are short forms uh, of sequence of opcodes normally, and string constants. For all of them you can choose a color whether they shall be bold or italic. So if I change the commands to this color and I say they shall be bold and press apply see it immediately this is applied to the source and I can do the same thing of course for all the other elements. The second thing you see here is the default case for content assist. It is here chosen to be a lowercase. What does it mean? Content assist shows you the list of all supported directives, opcodes, pseudo opcodes and illegal instructions. You can activate content assist by pressing control space. Then you get the complete list of all these elements that I mentioned. Every element has an icon that indicates its type. So what you see here is a directive. You see its actual name and you also see a short description describing where it comes from, uh, where the short form normally comes from. You have different icons also for the red ones are illegal opcodes, the black ones are normal opcodes and the green ones are as I mentioned uh, aliases or specific compiler short forms. So as I mentioned you can press control space and escape to hide the window away. Alternatively you have compiler specific auto activation characters very complex word. What this does it mean? It means if I'm in a TASM and I simply type a dot, automatically after half a second this is opened up. For MADS this is similar. In MADS you have instructions that start with a dot and you have other instructions that start with a hash mark. Okay, I press Control space and I get a suggestion. If I type in so the beginning of something that is unique and I press that, no pop-up is displayed, immediately the correct term is inserted. Also if I insert, if I have something unique that is across multiple lines, a control statement, you see it automatically inserts the ending statement and positions the cursor in the right way. If what I type in is not unique, then you see I can type ahead or back and the corresponding list is restricted. And now regarding the setting from the preferences, there it was set to lowercase. That means if you have not typed in anything yet, then it will be lowercase. If you start typing and you prefer uppercase and you start typing uppercase, of course, this is also automatically transferred and displayed as uppercase. Something that is quite helpful for new f uh, assembler users is that for all the opcodes there is also um, using the underline an indication where the actual short form, the mnemonic of the opcode comes from. Yeah, that's it for this tutorial, a rather short one. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next tutorial.